you know, honestly, most of you guys probably just shouldn't watch this video because this could ruin your night if you're someone that is, you know, dead set on a certain outcome for markets, you may be somewhat disappointed. But I got to just tell you what I am seeing right now is kind of scary. And I'll go over that with you here in this video. Now, I think there's not just one correct answer here. There is uh, different things you can do to maximize whatever happens next in markets. But from an economic standpoint, gosh, it is bad. Now, keep in mind, I have always been in the hard landing camp. Now, in July, and I mean, I'll just pull it up for you. I, I wrote this on the X account. I still have it pinned because well, why not? On July 9th, I pinned this. Keep in mind, markets were about five days from peaking on July 9th. July 9th was here, and we ended up going up say about one and a half percent after I made this post on X, but it says a 10% SPY correction is coming within the next six weeks. Why? Earnings expectations are too high as the economy has weakened in recent months. Expectations have only went higher. That's just not realistic. It is possible we could see a rotational correction. Give me a break. That's exactly what we've seen was a rotational correction. If you look at the equal weight S&P um, from July 9th, literally when I, dude, the, the literal day I made this post, the RSP was, was down about 0.17%. The next day you were up almost 1%. The day after that, you were up 1.2%. The day after that, you were up 1%, up a tenth of 1%, and then up almost 2% the next day later. Like from the literal date that post was made, the RSP, this is the equal weight S&P, went up 5% and has outperformed ever since. Ever since that post was made, the RSP is up 6.5%. The S&P from July 9th is up 1%. And we've seen exactly a 10% correction from the all-time high to the low that we hit, which was about 507 in pre-market on August 5th, you were down about 10.3%. So, I mean, we hit that one on, on the head, okay? Now, a lot of the time, I'm early to things. I've learned this about uh, myself. This is a journey that I've that I've been on for forever, really, in the markets, ever since I started investing back in 2017, 2018, um, you know, went went more full time around 2018. I've just learned I'm early to things. I'm typically not wrong, but I'm just very early. And uh, I mean, that was just a couple of days early, but there's been many of other examples. If you've been a viewer on this channel where I've been correct, but I've just been very, very early. And I think with what I'm going to say next, I could be just very early again. Because here's the deal. So as I explained uh, maybe a week or two ago, maybe three, three weeks ago or so. So I, I work at a restaurant and I've worked at this restaurant ever since I was 17 years old. I've, you know, re reduced the, the time I'm there, um, you know, because I, I do other things. I own rental properties. I'm a real estate agent. Real estate and restaurants go pretty well together because you do get some downtime. You can uh, write up contracts and, you know, take calls and all of that. So I've been able to make this work. Now, I also work at this restaurant with my mom. She works there, too. And uh, she started around the same time th that I did. And she has other things that obviously she does as well because, I mean, it's... <sighs> It's almost impossible to survive off of um, one income these days. But the long story short is this restaurant is struggling, okay? All of these restaurants are struggling. 
to a degree in which I have never seen before. I started at this restaurant March 20th of 2017. I've never seen anything like this. It's bad, okay? And where this restaurant is, it is a wealthy, uh, wealthier um, c- community in Michigan. And it's also a tourist town. So you get a lot of people from Canada that, that come over. You get a lot of people from around the world, uh, India, for whatever reason. A lot of Indian people come here too. And it is terrible. It is outright just bad. And I know what a lot of you guys will will think is, hey, maybe just the food's bad or the service is bad or whatever, and it's a specific thing. It's not. Everywhere in the 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 town, the city, and neighboring cities um, is just really bad. Now, I struggle to believe this is just a local issue, okay? I, I struggle with that. Because last uh, video that I made that I shared some insight on this, most of you guys said you're also seeing similar things. Now, just a little bit more context here. My grandmother, (laughs) she is uh, 66 years old and she got divorced from her husband of of 30 years and she never worked before. She went out and got a job. She worked at Subway. Subway. And, well, she got fired from Subway because they're slow. She's been looking for a job for over a month and can't find one. Um, So, I don't think it's just um, the restaurant industry. I think there's a bigger problem that could be going on here. Now, I think a lot of us, we we are probably better off, right? You're probably better off than the average person on the street. You probably have some kind of skill. You probably have some money, right? You're, you're investing in markets. Um, odds are you're doing better than the average person. And for a damn fact, The average guy on Wall Street or gal on Wall Street is doing better than the average person. Now, I think I have kind of that um, that insight to the average person that not a lot of people on Wall Street or even maybe others that make, you know, YouTube videos um, perhaps have. And what I'm seeing is not encouraging from the restaurant from my family un- unable to you know find a job to other people that I'm seeing um also also struggling I know a lot of people um that you know are are average people that are struggling and you know this doesn't necessarily have to mean things are going to go very south for the broader economy that that that's not exactly what I'm getting at here. If you take a look at something like the S&P and forward 12-month EPS estimates, they are at the highest they have ever been at. And with this kind of weakening that we are seeing, and again, I don't believe this is a local issue. There's there's nothing that has changed in, you know, the last couple of years that has changed this demographic. Like you know, the, the 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 town here has continued to grow, right? The area in which I'm speaking of has continued to grow. Nothing has changed there. There's more people that live there now than there was in 2017. Like, like none of the underlying variables have changed here. But the expectations that we have around the economy may be way too high. You know, it's funny because a soft landing implies that it could be a little bumpy, but it's, you know, still a, a, a soft landing, generally speaking. And there's not much of a, a, you know, bumpy landing priced into markets. Now, part of the issue that we may be experiencing and where I'm going to uh, stop myself short of being too bearish right now um, in the near term on markets is, is this. I think the economic data is very lagged behind. I don't think we're getting real-time data, and I think it, it it's really taking months to get real-time data, and 
is the data even correct? Like, is it actually real data? The way that the data is calculated, okay, it's, it's, it's done for the jobs report, let's say. It's not done by, you know, saying, hey, we're going to look at 5,000, 10,000 businesses each month and, you know, what are they uh, hiring or firing? They're not looking at social security numbers here. It's literally a algorithmic calculation. Now, that's why the BLS jobs report was just revised down 818,000 jobs. Because it's just a calculation. And then they get more data and they input that data and come to a different calculation. Now, the BLS jobs report tends to be accurate when the variables in the economy are not moving around too much. When the economy is just staying at a constant kind of rate of growth. But when you're at turns in the economic cycle, for better or you know for worse... The the algorithms, the 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 literal mathematic algorithm that they the BLS uses becomes very inaccurate. So I think from that standpoint, if we're thinking about an inaccurate algorithm, this could delay some of the on paper weakening that we may see by what could be a couple of months, could be six months of a delay. Before the data just starts to come in so bad and those inputs get actually formulated into bad monthly job numbers. But what I'm actually seeing on the ground is just outright scary. Okay, let's be honest. When, you know, COVID happened, the economy shut down like this period right now is way worse than that. Not even close to um, as bad. OK, there was really no change during during the covid time um, for the most part. Obviously, some restaurants got shut down and maybe that could have affected, you know, other restaurants and props some up. But, you know, generally speaking, this is the worst time anyone has ever seen in this restaurant, in neighboring restaurants, in neighboring, you know, uh, towns in r- recent times. I mean, I ever I, I think you could say and that's where i kind of struggle assuming that all is fine again i tend to be early to things so even if the economy is weakening a lot faster than we think i think it's gonna take some time to actually get reflected now some of you guys may recall um the past couple of videos that i have made where basically i've said that markets can go higher from here. Not big tech. I think big tech's going lower from here or going to trade sideways at the best case scenario. That's really your super six. Think Google, think Amazon, Microsoft, Meta, group them in there. Think Apple, um, you know, your, your typical big tech stocks. I think maybe even NVIDIA, especially Tesla, can do well in this environment because I do think the data is probably not going to collapse um, for the next couple of months. You could, you know, if 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 you put on a tinfoil hat, you could say the election has, has um, you know, part to do with that. But I, I do think from that standpoint, each data point is going to be hyper critic, criticized or critiqued um, by the markets. And unless we see data that that comes in worse than the other data that we have seen so far, I mean, durable goods orders last month came in at negative 6.4%. Like, we're going to have to see another really bad number for Wall Street to get nervous over that. Retail sales came in good. We're not going to get another retail sales report for a little while. Uh, We do have non-farm payrolls that come out. Um not next week, but the week after that. We do have NVIDIA earnings that come out this week, although I think NVIDIA is probably going to be pretty good. Um, You have other data that comes out in the first week of September, so not this upcoming week, but really next week. So we do have a little bit of time here. And the last Jackson Hole event we had, um, well, there's been two positive events in 1995 and 2007, both of which those years Wall Street thought there was going to be a soft landing. The Fed was going to start cutting rates and there was going to be a soft landing. Now, 2007 obviously was not a soft landing, 
but the markets thought there was going to be a soft landing so that jackson hole basically victory speech that we're going to start cutting rate speech was seen as positive in august of 2007 1995 was very positive and we did have a soft landing and markets did well and i think we're in another one of those scenarios where short term this Jackson Hole speech could likely propel markets higher. Now, for the headline S&P, I'm not as bullish. For Tesla, for small caps, for high-quality dividend-paying value, I'm, 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 I'm bullish in the short term. Um, until we get data that comes in bad, which could be two weeks from now, or it could be two, or three, four, five, six months from now. So... I would say I'm short term bullish, but still, you know, with Wall Street saying the kind of outlandish things that they are saying right now, I am very concerned, okay, um, over the next six to 12 months. Seth Golden writes, my outlook at year 2022 is a soft landing predicted on healthiest corporate and household ba balance sheets in history, paired with the second most robust labor and employment market in history. This was the most probable outcome. Soft landing is now certified like we're really gonna certify a soft landing we're not even gonna know if we're actually going to have a soft landing until the federal federal funds rate is at least three percent at least down to neutral we're not even gonna know if we're gonna have a soft landing for another year or two but we're declaring victory apollo says layoffs are currently at record low levels war notices are trending down the rise in the unemployment rate is not driven by people getting fired. Put differently, we are not in a recession. And it is debatable if the labor market is softening. Okay, that's a strong statement. If it's, if it's not softening, let's run with that. There is definitely weakness in consumer spending. There is definitely weakness in the consumer. I, I, I see this everywhere. Um, three out of five Americans believe we're in a recession per a firm. The buy now pay later company um I, I i think you would logically see that weakness before you see people lose their jobs um so to draw these conclusions of a soft landing that there's no basically no chance of a recession i think is not the best way to invest your money personally over the next six to 12 months in the near term that could be logical in the near term, I think the data will come in okay enough to support markets and continue to support a broadening out. Basically, the, the soft landing thesis, I think, will get a little bit stronger from here. And I think you will see Tesla do well. I think you will see small caps do well. I think you'll see all those you know, uh, cyclical and, and, and value areas, dividend stocks, do well. But this same time next year, we could be in a much different financial situation. So what do you do and how do you prepare for this? Well, again, if you are investing with a short term mind mindset or mind frame um, or maybe even a longer term mind frame, I think small caps are a perfectly fine place to be. Yeah, sure. Once the recession comes or, you know, a, a harder bumpy landing, if we want to use that analogy, small caps are going to sell off. Everything's going to sell off. But I think they're better priced for a recession even still. I think value stocks trading at five or 10 year lows, there's probably not that much downside left in those areas. And I think they can do well here in the next couple of months. Something like a Tesla perhaps could do well over the next two months or so heading into October 10th. So small caps, cyclical value Tesla. I think that can do well in this environment until we start to get really bad data. Um, but what's the ultimate kind of best thing to do right now? I'm just going to be honest with you. It's cash. Okay. Cash is king um, right now. And I think the longer it takes to get the data that shows what's actually happening in the economy, the longer this lag actually is, I hope it's six months. I hope it's a year because that's more money that you're going to have to deploy into our markets, to make your um, your wealth, right? To make your riches during a downturn. So, you know, bullish in the near term, I think getting more bearish 
over the next six to 12 months, kind of that medium term out uh, framework. But I do think the data is just very lagged behind. And when it starts to catch up, I think the data could flip quickly. But I probably I, I don't think that's going to happen before the election. I don't think that's going to happen over the next two, three months or so. Could be wrong. We could be in for some really bad data soon. Um, but at this pace, probably not. Um, so that that's kind of how I'm investing right now. Um, I'm still all in my Tesla position that I showed you guys in the last video. I have like 90 shares, around $195, like $20,000 or so um, in Tesla right now. Maybe a little bit less. Tesla stock has fallen. It, it was getting up there when Tesla was 270. Um, and that's just my position that I've recently built out. Um, buying a lot of dividend value stocks that are trading at steep discounts that are quality companies. Um, buying some small caps, some you know speculative pharma names. I think these areas will do well in the short term. But I'm still keeping like 30, 40% cash. And I really want to build that up, um, preferably to have a lot more, as much cash as possible. And I don't think you're going to be um, disappointed with that if if you are choosing to you know keep as much cash as possible. So let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Again, last time I talked about um, the restaurant that I worked at was weeks ago and Ever since then, even it's 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 way worse than it than it was even in the last video where where I talked about this. So again, let me know what you think. Let me know how your job is going. If you guys are busy, if you're not, if you're you know hearing more people that are struggling, I would love to uh, to know more about your situation and what you're experiencing. So nonetheless, guys, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.